project. And now the recording started. So Natalie, floor is yours. Just give us a small introduction. Yes, hi everyone. Good to see so many people here um, in the first live session. Welcome to, to the um, National um, Advocacy Module. Um, so I'm my name is Natalie. I'm the training coordinator at Urgency, um, which is the international CSA network. And we are part of a consortium together with AMPI and uh, the Zolavi net Netzwerk. Uh, where and together with uh, we are in total 10 partners actually in this project uh, and we created four modules uh, ranging from local to national and EU and Eastern European advocacy and the aim of the project is to support advanced learning for stakeholders involved in sustainable food systems that's hence the acronym SALCIFI <laughs> that you know uh, what it means as well and uh, yeah, we're really delighted to see so, many, so much interest in, in, in the program. Somebody has his microphone on there, I think. Um, yeah. Um, what I wanted to share as well with you is that we are start. We started already the Eastern European module. Now today we're starting the national module, but the the local and uh, European modules, if you are interested in that, will start only next week. And uh, we'll share the link with you uh, for the page where you find all the courses in the chat, so you can uh, have a look at it if that's also something you're you're interested in. I think from my side, that's that's it for the short intro. I'll pass it on to to Baldo and Alena. Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction, Natalie. Yeah, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Baldo Capusta. I work for the Solavi Network in Germany since some years. And yeah, we were in charge for preparing this session, this this education, this training module for everybody. And yeah, we'll just give a small introduction of ourselves. I think Alena can start. And... Hello, my name is Alena. I'm based in Prague and I work with Ampe. Uh, we are focused about CSA and supporting new and transformer. Yeah, great. Yeah, as I said, my name is Baldo. I work for the Netzwerk Solidarische Landwirtschaft in Germany. It's an organization which takes care of the aims of community supported agriculture, supports an education investigation, supports farmers who want to switch with consultations, participates in demonstrations and political debates as well. We are like six part time employees, some mini jobbers, and a lot of volunteers who take care of the whole work. Um, we're part of this course because there were some very active people in the past who did political advocacy as well up to the national level in Germany. There were some big um, issues we moved and but unfortunately they left in the network. We collected their different uh, perspectives, their experiences and with interviews and everything and shared it in this uh, in this training, translated it for this education. So just that you know, we are not the fully experts in advocacy, but we made our best to introduce a very nice and interesting session today. And then what follows are these online self-paced sessions where you can run in your self-organized time within the next two weeks before the second live session. But on this, I will lose some words a little bit later. So we have two guest speakers today. The one is Leonie, she's a social scientist and working on a doctoral thesis concerning advocacy in different CSA networks at the Utrecht University in the Netherlands. And as well, she's a big part of the German network. She's as a volunteer working on different tasks. The one is Florent Sabon. He's a CSA farmer. He's very active in France in the MAP network. He has experience in advocacy from the past, from his professional life, because there he was working in Brussels at a book advocate for, for different agricultural topics. So, but I think when they will present themselves during the presentations later. Concerning the course, just a small overview for you what to expect today. It will be, it's the first live session of the whole course. It will be, yeah, in two weeks, the second live session and in between time for yourself. Paced learning. Um, today's first is, of course, the introduction. We are right into, you can introduce yourselves a little bit later. It's the next. It follows the input by Leonie with a small reflection afterwards on this, on her input, then the input of Laurent, as well with a small reflection afterwards. And in the end, we want to close with a discussion and exchange in small groups that you can 
how you can adopt the new information to your campaigns, to your work, what you're doing right now. So yeah, we can just offer you some, some wood, some fuel, you need to light this fire later and keep on going with the motivation and the activity. It's really, we cannot switch you into some hours into the perfect advocates. We are sorry for this, but we start with this, <laughs> give you at least a little introduction. Um, for us, advocacy means that it's to spread the organization's message. So the audience can be very different people. It can be politicians, it can be NGOs or the public opinion other NGOs, other smaller organizations, yeah. yeah. But there are some like overall aspects which are relevant in all, all of those fields. And we made a collection of this different relevant ways and we divided it into kind of three pillars. It's the one is public relations, the other coalition building and the last one lobbying. Yeah. Because like this has three important areas and in the, the life, uh, in the self-paced, it's divided in these three pillars so you can walk through it each takes half an hour or something like this. As I said, it's an introduction. And yeah, we just invite you to have some reflection on your organizations and your capacities. Um, yeah, what else? Um, yeah, the information mostly comes from interviews and from other people who were active in the past, who are really like did a lot of work. And we added some further material with some context, we worked it out. And yeah, special thanks, of course, to our interview partners, Faiko, Stephanie and Matthias, just to value their work they did in the past. Um, yeah, now it will start as like a small introduction to each other in small breakout sessions that you can know each other and see if you like what's what's your aims, what your organization is doing, so you know a little bit each other. Since we are many people, it's not possible that we make the big round and that we introduce each other everybody because then the two hours are gone, which we plan. So it will be just in the small sessions, but so you get a small impression in the second live session there will be more room for discussion and for exchange later on so but now we need to start somewhere and this is the way to go um just about the platform you will receive the link for the further materials and everything later i think natalie or sam will lose some words in the end of the session as well on this so um, if there are any questions, it's the easiest way if you just put them in the chat. I think you'll find the chat, the chat below on the three dots. There's the word chat. And because otherwise, if everybody wants to say something, it can take a lot of time. If there's a very important comments or something, of course, you're invited to raise your hands and we can see if it fits or not. So this from our side. Um, now some time from some small introduction of your side. Um, Alena will prepare some small breakout sessions, like you will be with random four people in the room. The questions are just very, very briefly, like what's your name, what's your organization, what are you doing? And as well, what is your motivation to take part in the course? What do you want to learn? What, and if there's still some time, it's just, what's your great example for a political advocacy? If you have something in mind, you can share it in the group. It will be about like five minutes, just a very brief introduction to each other. And later on, we can just share the most important aspects. It's not needed that everybody needs to say something or each group, but just like to share if there's some very important comments. But first, you will be away for a minute, <laughs> for five minutes. To... OK, I open the breakout rooms. So enjoy your five minutes. We stay here, right? Uh, you can move, uh, for example, to room seven if you want. Okay. Because as co host, you can just choose their breakout rooms. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I just denied to him. Mm -hmm. I will not enter. I can organize. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was a horror to rush just <laughs> the last minute. I was like, wow, okay, get my bicycle go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But at least not within the session. It would be the horror when they cut it now. It's like, at least. And did you see if Laurent is here? Mm, I'm not sure because uh, here is some nickname Fab. Not, it not looks like Florent. 
Fabian as well who wanted to take Fabian, uh, an admin that will be here, but because a lot of uh, names, so and I check email and You find him? And did you did you did he react uh, after your email with the link? No. Send yesterday the mail and I didn't see anything. <laughs> Hopefully he will join, <laughs> otherwise we need to improvise a lot. <laughs> and there are some people waiting, I think it's good if they come back with when, like in 10 seconds, the other ones will finish the It's break Karin, up. it's uh, waiting. Mm -hmm. I exited it too quickly. Let's go over. Let's come back. Yeah, everybody's coming back. Thanks. Um. So see some people have like the name of the organization and what they're working for in the name. So if you like, you can change your name to, or add your organization. So we know a little bit more what, where, where you're coming from, what organization, what's your background. So if you're coming back, are there some points to share? What was like your very important points, aspects where you said like, wow, I'm, I like that this person is doing this organization, that they're doing these issues. Are there some points you're invited freely to just... If not, that's fine as well. <laughs> of course. 
Some people came a little bit later. We just made a small introduction right now, so you didn't miss a lot. And the whole session will be recorded. So in the end as well, you can watch it later if there's anything you miss right now or not. So I hope the time was enough that you get a small impression and could meet some other people a little bit more interactive. It's always difficult to have an interactive format with so many people. So it's the way we can offer. Um, does anybody want to share a point, mention something or anything? Now is the possibility. When you don't, it's fine as well. <laughs> then we can continue with the inputs. Like, um, yeah, the inputs are, as I already mentioned a bit, it's from, from experienced people they share their perspective. As I said, Leonie is a researcher. She has a lot of this academical perspective. And Florent, if he's here, he's a farmer and the lobbyist with uh, practical experience. Florent, if you're somewhere here, just mention that, write to us in the chat. We didn't find you, so just mention. Leonie, if you're ready, you can go with a small presentation and give us the input. I'm curious. Yes, thanks so much, Baldur, for the introduction. Uh, can you see, see my slides? Um, okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Um, well, oh, Baldur already explained a little bit of who I am. So, um, yeah, I'm currently finalizing my PhD dissertation on CSA networks. And, well, mostly I focus on the German CSA network. Uh, and amongst others, I've explored the role of political advocacy as a strategy for societal change. And well, today is just a great opportunity for me to present some of my research insights, but uh, no worries, I'm trying to re really keep it as practical as possible. And um, before starting, I would just like to briefly let you know what I will be talking about. Um, so I will first talk you through different strategies for con conducting political advocacy and then really delve into the different types of resources and skills that activists like you need for political advocacy. and. Yeah, I will just closing, uh, close by yeah, reflecting on some questions of legitimacy of advocates. Um, yes, and well, as I said, if you want to induce change via political advocacy, um, here on the slide, you can really see uh, a range of different activities or strategies that you could consider. Um, I guess, well, at least the people from, from the German context will recognize a couple of images. Uh, for instance, on the left upper corner, you see a photo of a manifestation, the We Are Fit Up manifestation, which is like an annual manifestation taking place in January in Berlin. And below, uh, we see a photo of the government agreement of 2018, uh, in which uh, the CSA network was mentioned as being worthy of institutional support after they're successfully making contact for with policymakers. And actually, um, those two examples are uh, really good examples of uh, yeah, different types of strategies uh, in conducting political advocacy work. So on the one side, um, insider strategies. So when you try to work within the system, within the existing institutions, um, or outside the system, when you yeah, try to, with protests and manifestations, direct action and campaigns, yeah, um, to put pressure on, on the system, but like you don't really try to interact immediately with them. Um, and of course, these two strategies are not multiply, well, mutually exclusive and they can be combined and they are combined by many agricultural grassroots movements. Um, but yeah, as a tendency, um, what you can see is that a lot of young movements and organizations tend to opt for outsider strategies while um, yeah, also because it helps them to recruit more activists, while more established ones um, tend to favor insider strategies. And today I will focus on, on the insider strategies. Uh, so I will foremost talk about the resources and skills that you are necessary uh, when you want to, yeah, to conduct lobbying and network with politi uh, political and administrative elites, uh, because this is also what my research largely focused on. 
But I do believe that a lot of the aspects are also valuable for those that are more interested in the outsider strategies and like such as conducting campaigns. So I hope there is a little bit of uh, interesting for everyone here. Um, yeah, so what resources do you need to mobilize if you want to conduct political advocacy? Um, yeah, as you can see on this image, there are actually quite a lot of different resources um, that are necessary for political advocacy. And while we usually tend to yeah, immediately think of money and financial means, um, there are actually other resources that I would like also to bring in today um, that are needed to yeah, contact uh, and persuade policymakers. Yeah, um, so as I said, the most obvious one are the financial resources that can be generated in different forms by membership fees, grants, donations, and um, yeah, they are crucial for political advocacy because obviously they allow also for hiring some staff members that then can devote time to carrying out advocacy. But we also know, or a lot of you will know that uh, many agriculture uh, grassroots movements are notoriously underfunded and uh, that brings us to another really important re or yeah resource that's like volunteers that can also provide time uh, to conduct political advocacy. Um, but yeah, for both staff members and volunteers, political advocacy is actually quite demanding because it's so time consuming uh, and requires a lot of perseverance. And also um, people need to be willing to work in or conduct political advocacy in like weird hours. So a lot of the informal meetings uh, with policymakers um, that are actually quite key for political advocacy take place uh, in the evening or during the weekend. So uh, just so you know, sometimes advocacy needs also to be willing to make some sacrifices. Um, and then of course, there are different skills and capa uh, capabilities and expert knowledge that are really key uh, for being an advocate. Uh, so we will get to that in a bit more detail in a bit. But uh, first, I want to talk uh, a bit about the importance of um, yeah, having allies and uh, building networks and getting moral support uh, when conducting political advocacy work. Um, so with allies, I refer to yeah, usually ideologically aligned uh, either food movements or environmental or other social movements that could potentially support your cause and help reach more people or broaden your network. So if we think of the context of a CSA, um, yeah, obvious allies would be the peasant movement in Germany, for instance, the ABL, Arbeitsgemeinschaft für Eierliche Landwirtschaft, or um, the solidarity economy or commons movements, depending on what topics you want to advocate on. And um, with an alliance, we can or we often think of this like very long-term interactions, but they could be also quite short-lived, like finding someone for a very specific event or topic that will be li likely uh, to support you. Um, then the next important resource is the moral support um, from movement sympathizers that can be, yeah, from a right range as like celebrities, researchers, or politicians that can really help you to legitimize your struggle. So for instance, here on the lower left corner, uh, you can see a photo of a member of parliament or a former member of parliament um, of the Social Democrats in Germany, Rainer Spiering, who uh, after meeting with some activists of the German CSA network, um, expressed his support uh, for the CSA model uh, during a speech of parliament and named it all worthy of institutional support. And of course, that's, yeah, that's quite important because um, it, on one hand, um, makes CSA much more visible to a number of politicians, but also gives them legitimacy. And um, lastly, it is really important to be well networked and trying to establish and maintain personal relations with uh, policymakers, because then you only know who you need to talk, contact for what specific purpose and topics, and also yeah, have the ability to ask them favors, right, to speak up for you. Um, so maybe you can just think about if there's any politicians that you have already contacts to, and also if there are some people that could you help establish these contacts. Uh, okay, and let's now turn to the skills that advocates need. 
Um, it is really important to be able to assess and understand the political system. So um, in particular, it's, it's quite essential to tailor your story, your narrative to the target audience. Um, so you can st um, start by asking yourself, like, okay, who do I want to reach? Uh, what values, ideas, and keywords actually resonate with my target audience? And what is their political uh, background or area of the expertise? Um, if we take the example of, yeah, how we should frame community-supported agriculture to politicians, then uh, we can adjust actually, um, yeah, the description of it depending on the political party or the policymaker at play. So if we would think of the conservative party, if we approach someone from the conservative party, it is probably useful to stress that CSA can safeguard traditional family agriculture and simulate rural areas while if we would speak for someone from the left party, um, we could frame CSA um, as a solidarity system, as being part of alternative economies, and um, also its contribution to environmental protection. Um, so you see that it's like quite a big difference there. Um, then also next to defining the target audience, uh, we need to yeah, be able to assess the role of politicians uh, in terms of yeah, finding out actually who is the person that has decision-making power and is this uh, politician ideologically close to our struggle. Uh, you can see this uh, yeah, little image on the right corner that is actually from a previous urgency project. Um, and there you can see that unsurprisingly, you should especially focus on those politicians who have a lot of power and whose interests are quite aligned with yours. Yes, and then um, there are also different channels through which you can reach out to politicians. And actually it's quite strategic to use um, both formal and informal channels. So formal channels would be some sort of more pre-arranged meetings or uh, written official uh, demands or formal requests, while informal channels would be yeah, seizing these informal moments, uh, for instance, approaching um, a politician after an official event uh, over a drink. And um, of course, this allows for more personal types of interactions and um, a lot of my interviewers have stressed how important um, these yeah, more personal interventions are. Um, another really relevant factor for uh, conducting advocacy is also yeah, the timing of your actions and the ability to recognize so-called windows of opportunities. So it's quite good to reflect if there is a particular moment or um, date in the legislative calendar that you know about. Um, where you think that your chances of success are particularly high or good to like start an action. So um, maybe it's useful to think about, okay, when are elections coming up? Um, is the government change likely? Uh, which government will be more likely to yeah, support your cause than old or the new government? And also uh, maybe there are additional dates and events um, that are not related so much to, to the legislative calendar. Um, that where like the interest of policymakers on, for instance, agricultural topics is really high. So if we think of Germany, one uh, obvious example would be the alternative Green Week, or uh, if we think more also interesting for international setting, the International Day of Peasant Struggles, right? So especially also for uh, reaching a broad media outlet. So um, it's good to like really think strategically about these things. Um, yes, then political advocacy is also um, yeah, quite tricky and requires a lot of, of soft skills. On the one hand, it really needs, like what efforts need to be quite persistent and show presence and maybe some tips on how to do this is like, okay, if you want to try and reach out to politicians, uh, they might not respond. So it's really good to follow up emails with calls and just call a lot of times and don't let you be disencouraged. Um, also just, yeah, show your face at different events that where uh, polit politicians that are related to what you're doing show up. So for instance, agriculture, food systems, regional development, and really like just do it again and again. 
uh, political advocacy can really take a long time to bear fruits. So it's important to not get frustrated in the process uh, if there's no immediate uh, positive response or visible outcome at first. Um, and something else that, uh, mm, yeah, my interviews have stressed is that it's helpful to try and connect on policymakers on a more personal level. So to not focus too much on the official label of being a policymaker, uh, their party or their status, but yeah, really try to connect as a person. And um, they've also stressed that if it doesn't work to collaborate with a specific politician, uh, yeah, then just try someone else. Uh, it doesn't mean that because for instance, you yeah, try to approach them from the Green Party and you have a bad experience that then this means that it will be the same with all politicians from that party. Um, yes, and so next to understanding the system uh, and having or developing soft skills and practical knowledge is also really indispensable for political advocacy. So uh, having practical experience with and like also technical knowledge on agriculture can help you to be perceived as much more credible in the eyes of politicians. Uh, and also, uh, I was told that it's really the personal narratives that uh, get people and that they convince much better than facts. You need to know your facts, but facts are just one part of the story. You also need to have like, yeah, this narrative, this personal stories. And these narratives can become even more powerful when you as an advocate complement uh, your own experience by referring to the situation of the broader movement, to other CSA or agri-food projects, um, and especially how the movement has developed nationally and internationally over time. Because um, this kind of signals to the politicians that the topics that you're discussing are not only relevant to you, but also to other actors. So you can just signal that, yeah, we are many, which is always, um, yeah, really helpful. Um, yeah, so some takeaways. Um, yeah, we have just like seen that political advocacy requires quite a broad range of different skills uh, from understanding the political system to more practical knowledge on agriculture uh, and the CSA movement more broadly. Um, so maybe you can just like think for yourself which of these skills you already have and which ones are lacking. And yeah, don't worry if you have all these skills or all these skills yet. Um, I would say, given that they are so yeah, different, uh, it's really difficult that one person will reflect them all. So it's, I would actually encourage trying to teaming up with other advocates who have complementary skills uh, and also that can help like to um, yeah, shift the, the uh, workload from one person to, to more people. And yeah, also, as I said, the struggle can potentially take a very long time. Um, so, and as Baldo has said, some people from the German network have disengaged over time. So also one thing that I think we have all learned would be to document your efforts and make sure to transmit your knowledge or your context to other interested activists in time to uh, ensure the continuity of uh, political advocacy and your struggle. Um, this can be really helpful. And I now just want to end by some reflections on yeah, the position and legitimacy of advocates. Um, so I would just encourage everyone who wants to advocate to reflect on yeah, of, of, of behalf of whom can you actually speak on advocate and whose views do you represent or not represent? And also on what topics are you legitimate advocate and maybe also quite fundamentally, do other people know that you're advocating on their behalf? Uh, in some cases, you might even need to think about whether a mandate or some other form of more formal legitimization um, may be necessary. And um, especially if you advocate on behalf of a large group, also on how can you keep your, you know, your fellow, fellow um, people in the loop? Uh, do you need and how often do you need to report back to your movement, to your community, to your organization? Um, yeah, that's my input uh, so far. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to the rest of the session. And yeah, of course, feel free to ask any questions or comments. Um, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks a lot, Leonie. What a great input. So much information for all of us. <laughs> I think a lot of things were new to some of you. Um, 
this was very a very brief introduction to the topic. I think there will be way more, or I'm sure there will be way more of this information, and it will be way deeper in the in the self-paced time and material you can work on. You will receive the link later on, and Natalie in the end will lose some words on this e-learning platform as well. But for now, um, as Luni said, are there any questions, any comments? It was a bit quicker than I expected, so you're invited as well to raise your voice or just write it in the chat. If you want to comment something, if there's something you say, well, this is so brilliant, I want to know more, now's the time. Or even if there are questions, we have Leonie here, as you heard, she has a lot of experience, so now's the time to ask your questions. Yes, Sabrina, go ahead. Yeah, hello. Um, I wonder, so as you said, one of the resources is money. <laughs> um, did your, the participants of your research or the people that you interviewed um, also uh, talk about some strategies also they have to um, have time and money and all the resources to do this advocacy because sometimes i think of organizations who have i don't know projects for this and that but they actually use this project to do advocacy for some special topics so um getting money from somewhere but use it for something else some for example I don't know if you know what I mean, but uh, did, hijacking did... the system, <laughs> huh? Like hijacking the system. Yeah, yeah kind of. Um, did did you get some ideas about that? Because otherwise, I I would say if this is the, I mean that's the, the biggest problem, right? Having time and and money. Yeah, yeah it's a bit like the hand act problem, right? Like you need um, money to conduct political advocacy but you also yeah so it's like this reinforcing thing um no it, unfortunately there were i haven't come across creative strategies for funding um i do think actually well the may, maybe most creative one is actually this course because i do think that one person that was active in the german um movement pushed for instance uh, at, the, at with urgency or was just like saying how important this topic is and that this course should be made or that was maybe a creative way of um, mobilizing financial resources uh, by getting urgency on board and uh, to put this topic a bit on the agenda um, but yeah otherwise it is really one of the like limiting factors and um, I'm sorry that I can't be more <laughs> useful here um, to, to bring in the like creative strategies. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I think there are further projects going on on urgency which are really focusing on this topic as well, like on how to fund things and this will, things which in the future will come as well because yeah, Sabrina, you're absolutely right. Time and money, other things are always lacking. <laughs> you always need it. So um, yeah, Simona, please go ahead with your question or comment. Hello, thank you very much for the input, Leonie. Um, I was wondering if you focused on trying to advocate for new um, installations of politics, for example, or could you say something about, um, is it more useful to try to um, bring some things uh, new into installation? or to fight against things we don't want to have. You know what I mean? Uh, there's always this struggle against something or um, trying to do something positive. Was that part of your work? Mm, not really. So I didn't, yeah, I understand what you mean also because of course that's a, like a, often a criticism um, that yeah, like leftist projects or, or, or leftist like, like people always criticize but don't have um, any proposals. But I do think that actually this is 
a strength that can be combined, like especially by this type of agricultural grassroots movements, because they can very strongly criticize and push for change at the same time, right? And I think that is quite a, like in my opinion, that is something that kind of needs to go together because if you only uh, show the great alternative, uh, you don't really talk about all the like structural underlying problems that will also hinder you on, on the way to realizing this great alternative. Uh, so for me, I would say that uh, yeah, while, while like this particular research on advocacy is not there, I see these strategies as like not going one without the other. Um. Okay, thanks a lot. I hope this cleared a little bit, Simon. And then Charlotte, please, your question, your comments. Yeah, thank you. Also, Leonie, thank you for your input. Um, maybe it's similar to the question of Sabrina. Um, have you come across some platforms or project management tools or methods that help to overcome this uh, time and money problem or that supports uh, the information and the tools you just gave uh, to, to implement those at the first step in your uh, organization? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, so because I focused mostly on the experience of the German CSA network, it was quite a particular situation because it was very driven by individuals who were just um, investing a lot of their own time and actually didn't use any structures, uh, or, or, right? Like, so it was basically, okay, I, I have the contacts, I have the time, I'll just do it, which is great, but kind of, that's why, my, my main message now in the end was like, hey, it's really important to then use those tools and um, transmit these types of knowledge because otherwise you just end in a situation where once the person that wants to do that, uh, yeah, you cannot really continue the efforts. Um, so I'm not like, there, there haven't been any project management tools that have been used so far, um, but, I, that would be something I would recommend everyone looking into uh, for the future. <laughs> yeah, so it's not possible to contact everything, right? <laughs> would be great. Um, yeah, another question by Nico, go ahead. Nico, if you like, or you just raise the hand for fun. Okay, we don't hear you, actually. Well, it is like it is. <laughs> Are there any further comments or anything from your side? Otherwise, I prepared a small Mentimeter. Oh, no, Karin, go ahead. Uh, hello? Hello, yes, hello, hello? Yes, okay. No, I, it's it's okay. Um, I would like to know uh, if um, you did uh, uh, some research to the question: uh, Who is um, keen on doing this kind of uh, advocacy work? Um, because you mentioned this uh, amazing uh, amount, or I think amazing, amazing uh, skills that people need uh, to do this work. I wonder if you uh, found out about who is uh, capable, uh, who has the skill to do it, who is uh, somehow to... Uh, um, yeah, near to it, close to it. Yes, thank you. Um, well, I can say what it has been in the past, but nonetheless, I would encourage that everyone can become close or a, an advocate, right? So um, maybe people start that 
or like what I've seen is either people that have an affinity or close links uh, to politicians uh, already or people that were like directly involved in farming and just you know need these changes need to see these changes be happening soon and like a personal vested interest in there um but as I said like um for me, it's also about recognizing that these skills can hardly be combined in one person alone, uh, especially if you think about all the skills and knowledge that you already need to know uh, to be a farmer and then like expecting for someone to develop the, the whole other skill set on top. It's just not what will be feasible also in terms of like all these like time constraints that you have. So for me, there it is also maybe um, finding on the one hand someone that is like, or there are a lot of interested practitioners that really feel like, okay, we need to need, have this change and we can give the narrative, we can be the voice that like just need support from other people that maybe um, have already a good idea about the political system, how it works, maybe some context who are like just interested to, to establish that and then uh, to support them, to support the farmers, practitioners, um, yeah, and getting their voice out. Hope that answered it. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Hello? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, hear, so hear me now? Like, yeah, sorry. Like okay, we, my bad. We, yeah, sorry, sorry. And then we go on with the, with the session. So Nico first and then Carl. Please, Nico, now. Please. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, so... Uh, um, the presentation may seem like the informal uh, ways of approaching like politicians or whatever to um, make them like connect them on, to them on a personal level and uh, make them intrigued and, and to something is way more effective than uh, the formal ways. Is that true? Or is that, is that something you can confirm? Uh, well, at least like, that's what my, like the people that I've interviewed told me like that. Uh, yeah, that it's like really important that, I mean, if if you have a formal demand uh, without any previous context, then maybe they will not like pay a lot of attention to it. So it like really helps to establish professional contacts and then uh, follow up on it with like a more formalized um, approach, right? Like, so uh, they know that you will be coming for it, kind of. All right, thank you. Okay, thanks for the question. Yeah, Carl, go ahead. Last question for now. And then later after Florence's presentation, we can go on and have a half an hour in the end for discussion as well. So, Carl, please. I just want to talk without the video because it's too bad the quality then. Uh, I said I wanted to emphasize at this point that uh, Leonie put, uh, put somewhere in uh, the presentation uh, is very important where it says that uh, you have to be conscient about what's the mandate you have uh, from the people you try to represent. And from my experience now, I think it's uh, even more difficult to get this mandate from the people you want to represent than to talk to politicians about things. And uh, this point is yeah, I think this is really a crucial point, and it's uh, yeah because they, the people in the CSA movement uh, working in CSA, they they don't want they don't have much energy, they don't have much time, and they don't have much money, uh, so uh, they are afraid of like <laughs> giving the task to you sometimes because they think that then they have to put so much work in you and uh, communicate with you and or give you money or <laughs> things like that. So, yeah. That was more kind of a comment, <laughs> but important aspect of what yeah, we discussed this topic already sometimes with how to be legislated. So um, I prepared a small Mentimeter. It's like a small poll where you can just just to highlight the most important aspect you took from the presentation of Leonie, that you can just like sort of reflect like, okay, what was the input? What was important for you? And then later on, we have a small like a summary of what, yeah, what, what was it all about? What was your most important, like your highlight? You find the, the link in the chat, you can just click on it and just write a, 
comment. I hope it works. If not, I don't know if only I have the problem, but it says uh, no active question for this presentation. Oh my god. <laughs> um, just a second, I will copy it again. Sorry for this. Does this one work now? Okay. So yesterday it worked when I prepared it. Um, so let's do it in a different way. So you can just put it in the chat, <laughs> I would say. Would have been nice to work with another two, but yeah, the core question is like, I will just write it here. Um, like what, what, ex what aspect attracted your attention most and what, what was your highlight? Just some small, um, yeah, just a short, like some words. It's not, don't need to be a novel you write, but just that we got a small impression. Sorry for the technical issues. Seems to be a day for this. Hello. Hello, Florent. Nice that you're here. Just in some minutes, we will go on with your presentation. Just that you know. For everybody, in the meantime, when you just made your notes, maybe you just get up, stretch yourself, breathe in deeply to get new power for the second part, that it's not just one presentation after the other. So if you want to just point your notes, your highlights, breathe in, get up, stretch yourself. And Get ready. I will just clarify with Flo. I always see a lot of different answers, the personal stories. Yeah, the, the difference between lobbying and activists. That there's are two different ways. Yeah, the informality, which is a pretty important aspect. One said it's the formal structure which uh, enables us to work informally with the other ones. Mm. Yeah, the personal relations and the personal aspects, personal stories. Yeah, and as well, it's important that it's to have a team, otherwise it's hard. Yeah, and it's a very complex thing. <laughs> I think later on we can share it. We will see. Yeah, thanks for this answers, this highlights. Um, I think we all take some new aspects with us from this session. And as I already mentioned in the e-learning, which you can follow up next two weeks, there will be these topics will be deeper. Some like the chart Leonie showed once, which comes from all the project, we use it as well again because it's a very interesting and important tool. So, yeah. I think, Florent, you're already waiting to share your experience <laughs> as it sounds. So, maybe it's nice if you introduce yourself briefly. I just made a small introduction in the beginning that you are very active in the AMAP network in France and the CSA network, that you're a farmer. But as I say, in the former life, you worked as an advocate in Brussels. And you said you don't have a presentation with you, but we are very curious to hear from your uh, experiences, from your stories, from your successes, from the maybe not so successful stories. So, Laurent, please go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me properly? Yes, it works fine. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not direct. Uh, I'm, I'm not connecting to connected to Zoom. As as uh, 
were saying before, we cannot have all the skills and the IT skills are not mine. So I'm trying to, <laughs> to get connected in other ways. I'm, a, I, I'm by phone. So I'm, I'm uh, living um, 100 kilometers from Paris uh, and I'm farming. I've been farming for the last uh, 12 years. Uh, on our farm, we're producing vegetables, fruits, um, herbal tea and honey. Um, we're uh, 100% uh, in the CSA system, uh, which in France is called AMAP. Um, and in uh, my previous life, I was uh, working for international solidarity NGOs, uh, grouped into networks uh, in Brussels. Uh, and uh, my task was to try and influence um, the uh, trade agreements between the European Union and developing countries and to try and get um, members of the European Parliament and members of the Council to um, change their decision in order to have uh, trade agreements that are uh, more in favor of uh, poor people in developing countries. Um, I've done that for, the, for, for eight years and then I changed and became a farmer. Uh, and now in uh, in uh, France, I'm in addition to the time I spend in the field, uh, I spend some time uh, with the regional CSA network and with the national CSA network uh, to influence uh, some local to try and influence some local decisions and to try and influence some uh, national decisions. And uh, I wanted to share two examples with you. Uh, one, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take them uh, by a chronological order. The first one uh, was in uh, 2015, um, an example of uh, a campaign which was successful. Um, there was the European, the sorry, the regional elections in France in 2015 and um, the many of the agricultural decisions, uh, um, public policy decisions are taken at regional level in France, uh, including uh, administration of a, a big part of the common agricultural policy. The, the, the decisions on how to administer the common agricultural policy are uh, at the regional level. So for our movement, the CSA movement and the uh, Via Campesina movement, it is very important to follow what is happening at regional level because there is some ways to um, develop a new form of agriculture and to support sustainable agriculture and CSA agriculture, citizens agriculture, with the support of the regions, if the regions are going in our direction. And uh, we, we, we knew that together with the CSA uh, network and a few other networks at regional level. This is why we did a campaign on the regional elections um, um, we, dim, we we drafted a manifesto and we went to uh, all the the candidates and we invited the candidates on farms uh, during the campaign. So they were happy to take very nice pictures of them in the farm. And when they were on the farm, we asked them to sign uh, a manifesto um, in which we uh, led them to commit to maintain uh, specific, uh, uh, specific support for uh, new farmers, to maintain specific uh, subsidies for um, uh, networks that are helping new farmers and CSA farmers. So in that manifesto, we had these two demands, plus a few other demands. And uh, most of them did sign, including the, the one who was elected. Uh, there was a big change in the, so I am in the Paris region uh, and we had uh, the left wing uh, presiding the region for uh, two terms and it changed in 2015. So the right wing won. So it was a big challenge because usually in our parties, the, the right wing are less 
favorable to uh, citizens agriculture so uh, but but they did sign a, a, most of what we asked them to sign so we were happy even though we knew it was just a signature on paper and uh, it didn't mean that they would really do it um, and so after the elections uh, so, so for us, it was really important that they could also use during their campaign the fact that they're signed. We used the, the Twitter, Facebook, and so on to also show pictures of them in the farms and to show their signature on the papers we asked them to sign uh, to publicize the fact that they signed our, our paper and the, our demands. And after the election, um, there was a big change, not only in our region, um, most of the region before 2015 uh, were were uh, presided by uh, left-wing presidents and in 2015 there was a big change most of the region were right-wing presidents and there's a big uh, alliance between the right-wing party and the agro industry and the agro industry union which is in france called the fnsa and the the one of the first measure that the, the presidents in different regions of France took after the elections was to change uh, the support they were given to citizens agriculture um, uh, to, 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 do, to take back this support and to finance instead uh, hunters union and uh, all different kinds of uh, uh, unions which, which had nothing to do with organic agriculture and citizens agriculture. So there was a national move where most of the presidents in the different regions um, uh, tried to, to give massive support to agro-industry rather than citizens' organic, organic industry, uh, agriculture. <clears throat> and so how, how did we react in our region? We had this paper which was signed, and, but it clearly wasn't enough to make our president deciding to change uh, the options uh, that she wanted to take to follow also the other presidents in other regions. Uh, and so we organized different meetings with uh, people from her party and her coalition party. So it was right wing and people which we tend to usually not to have close links uh, within the CSA movement, but we said, okay, we need to talk to everybody. And we talked to regional uh, members of the regional parliament our traditional friends in the left wings, we kept uh, talking with them, especially to have information on when the decisions would be taken, even though now they had no more the power. So they wouldn't be the ones who would take the decision, but they would be the ones helping us in uh, basically hitting at the right moment, uh, which was really important uh, to understand precisely when <coughs> the decision was taken and therefore, when we needed to meet different people to uh, have something to say which was uh, uh, relevant in, in terms of timing. So uh, the opposition, the left wing, uh, our traditional friends helped us in being more relevant. And then we decided to meet the other ones and to uh, have a discussion with them by not changing our usual, usual speech, but by explaining them that that we were not the the, the awful uh, uh, green and reds uh, which would uh, kill everybody, but that we we would basically uh, we, we have very specific proposals to uh, make sure that they could be proud to support uh, organic agriculture. So also we had we adapted a bit the speech to 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 show them that they could be proud of supporting organic agriculture. And uh, that we at, at this point we were just constructive, and uh, we ha so we had a few members of the regional parliament from the uh, right wing parties which started supporting us, and but we felt that still the president <clears throat> had real difficulty supporting us, and uh, what was very important I think in our experience is that we maintained the discussion with these members of the regional parliament, and at the same time when there were key moments, key discussions in commissions in the, in the, in the regional parliament, key uh, moments where the president had to take some decisions. We organized uh, some protests. So we did two protests, uh, but very funny protests uh, where we organized, for instance, once we organized a wedding uh, j just uh, um, in front of the regional parliament, a wedding between uh, 
uh, a um, farmer and uh, a consumer. And uh, it was celebrated by a real mayor, which uh, it was the mayor of our village, which uh, who was really supportive uh, of uh, citizens agriculture. And we had like 300 people participating at, in that wedding. And it was very funny. There were sheep, there were animals all over. And basically we had uh, press coverage also. And we, we, we had songs also. And many of the regional parliament members, including some center or center right did participate in in the wedding um and 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 did express the their will to to have um support for organic citizens agriculture and uh one month after uh we organized uh, uh some funerals uh of the because we felt that the president was about to abandon the promises he made uh in uh, in uh, signing uh, our papers during the election during the, the election campaigns so we organized the funerals uh, where we had we had the, the all the promises which were buried and uh we had songs and again we had people so in it, basically in two months we increased the pressure in advance of the plenary session where when uh, the president initially wanted to um uh, decide to to suppress the funding for the organic uh, sub, uh, organizations uh, and she had planned that and we 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 organized these two protests funny protests where, where and we maintained during these two months pressure on members of the regional parliament and at the end of the, these two months we we did a, a big petition uh, not ourselves with the a, a, a website where we started changepoint.org where we started the uh, our petition, but we uh, partnered with uh, a specialized organization uh, called Agir pour l'environnement in France, where, where their um, their job is to make huge petition on uh, environment uh, issues. And so uh, we partnered, and, and this petition had many signatures, and it it came really a few days before the plenary session. And it was a success because the fact that we a maintained the discussion with the the parliamentarians b that we organized the two protests and c that we did this petition led to a decision in the parliament uh, the regional parliament that they in the end maintained the support for the organizations that help organic and new farmers uh, compared to other regions in france where these uh, funding was were uh, suppressed uh, in many cases and after that the, that president uh, never never went back on that decision, even in her new term, because she understood that it could be important to have the voices of uh, people uh, thinking that organic agriculture counts. Um, so even though on many different things we do not agree with her, on the funding for new farmers and organic organizations, she did maintain it. So that was an example of a positive experience we had uh, at the regional level uh, and and I think what we have to learn from it is uh, do the the inside work with the, the parliamentarians but also use the fact that CSA is a movement and uh, we have many people uh, that are eating and that are farming in the CSA movement and if we're able to make to put them uh, into uh, funny ways uh, in the streets uh, that counts, uh, even if we're not like a million outside, uh, just 500 uh, person in front of the regional parliament, it does, uh, it can make a difference. At least in this case, it did make a difference because we made it at the very good moment politically uh, because we followed, thanks to our allies in the opposition parties, we followed the process and the agenda very carefully. So we did not arrive when it was too late. Another example I can share um, is uh, a, a more local example where uh, we're a group of CSAs around our farms um, uh, opposing to a, a project, uh, which is a, um, a project to, I, I, I never know the English term, but to transform um, cereals into uh, gas, into methane. 
Um, I think it's well developed in Germany. Uh, in French, we call it metan- metanization, to to basically transform cereals into gas. And uh, here were many CSA uh, who opposed to that for environmental reasons because it brings carbon into the atmosphere rather than uh, uh, sticking carbons and leaving carbons in, in the soil because it takes uh, land uh, which will not be used to feed people but which will, which will be used to produce gas. And because it costs a lot of money, uh, because this uh, industrial process does not work without financial support from the public sector. And we think the public sector should rather isolate uh, houses rather than supporting these kind of projects. So um, we have this project and uh, many CSAs and farms opposed to it. But we arrived very late uh, while the, the, the authorization were uh, many of the authorization were already given, and now we're we're trying to oppose. For instance, this Sunday we're organizing a protest, um, and we had a few successes, um, but we were late in the process, and uh, we we tried also to to put the press, uh, but I, my impression is that despite the process the protest that we will organize on um on sunday it will be difficult to have a change in the decision because we weren't uh sufficiently uh checking uh, when to intervene and now it seems a bit that we're intervening but too late so we're trying to find ways with lawyers and with um elected representatives of the city councils around us uh to 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 see whether there can be some appeal for that project and to re-enter in a process which is normal rather than basically saying we do not agree while the thing has already been uh, validated. Uh, one of the strengths we have in this, uh, um, in this fight is that we're not alone CSAs. We brought together with us many different local actors, um, for instance, school teachers, parents, uh, who do not want uh, pollution next to the schools. Uh, we have uh, health representatives because it will bring different types of gas, which will be bad for health. And so we have a few doctors in the um, organization we did set up to um, fight against this project. We also uh, have uh, artists, uh, singers, uh, painters, who do very, very interesting um, things uh, and art pieces around this project. So it makes it less boring to, um, to fight. And for instance, for an elected representative, he or she will find it more fun to be interested to our fight because there is this art uh, thing around uh, the, the the fight we're 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 leading and the press will also be sometimes more interested if there's a concert or if there's uh, some uh, some paintings uh, rather than just a few people uh, meeting uh, a mayor or a few people protesting in front of the of a city hall so uh, i think i'm not sure we will be successful for this case but I think one thing which we'll try to reproduce is to have a broad coalition with people who we usually do not necessarily partner with. Um, and we try uh, because they also have other networks and they can talk to other mayors and other elected representatives. So from this, we learned to uh, not be alone and to try to to to, to build partnerships with uh, uh, many different people who can uh, basically make our uh, fight stronger, and also I think our fight much more, much more fun. Because I think there is also one very important thing: if uh, we in the CSA movement, if we uh, farmers uh, want to influence, we're usually doing that on a uh, on a free basis. We're not paid for that, so it's time that we are taking after our work in the farms or after our work for eaters after their work in their jobs. So if it's boring, 
we won't do that for a long time. If it's fun, I think we will have a, a larger audience and the elected representatives might be more interesting if it's fun, but also we will have much more energy because uh, when it's fun, we want to do it more. So I think, I think in both fights, by the way, in the regional and in the local one, we try to make, to make it fun every time. Is it enough or should I it's nice. It's nice. think it's about really something else? <laughs> Big motivation to be, yeah, enjoy, joyful, but not just always fighting against and having the struggles in mind. Thanks a lot, Florent. Really, it was a very different pe perspective to the um, addition to what Leonie said, really. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, as you see, we took two very different perspectives to very different experts on the topics and um, now I will send the Mentimeter, which works. I just tried it. I hope <laughs> it will work fine. So just mention what was your highlight, your most important aspect. And um, yeah, just click on the link in the chat and you will find it. And as well, of course, we will make a session of question and answers. I think till half past 11 is five, because then we will go into a, more in a group discussion or more like in, in small breakout sessions that you can discuss the topic learned and how this can be connected to your... Uh, to your aims, to your ways of advocacy. So go ahead with the with the Mentimeter, like what was your highlight? What do you take with you? What was the most important point? And yeah, then as well, if there are questions, raise your hands. Okay. Hopefully Florent can, can respond. Are there any comments? Years. Can you share what you see on Mentimeter as you see the results? I'm just checking it. Um, yeah, I can just share. Um, so, is there expect like? Um, just a second, second, I share. Um, here we go. Let's see, like, consider the local level, the wedding, fun, the wedding twice, wedding and funeral, third time, talking to the enemies, important aspect, I think. It's not, but later on in, during the, the, digital session for yourself, you will learn about this topic more, talking to enemies, talking to friends, what brings more. Yeah, advocacy can be joyful. It's a movement, use it, important aspect. The invitation of politicians to farms, sheep. <laughs> it's a very different aspect, but I think we got the the activist part, like the, the creative part as well. It's not just all about writing big papers and doing a lot of fundamental research but as well to be creative and do joyful joyful actions so yeah any questions comments to Florent I will stop the show it any boundary go ahead yeah one comment down to earth information of full emotional aspects that we have to consider. Thank you. Yeah, bring the connection. Other questions as well? We have some minutes. So if you want to use your voice, just go ahead. But it was more detail, uh, no more, more details and more like examples, not so much like the input from Leonie, which was more like on technical issues <laughs> to say it like this. So, but. Anyone else? Simone, yeah, please. Hello. Uh, Florent, I would like to know 
how was that for you to talk to people you usually don't talk to? It's really something hard for me to imagine. Yeah. Um, I mean, you select your enemies still. Huh? We, we, we did not go until talking to um, the far right, the far right um, movement, uh, who we usually decide not to talk in the CSA movement. But we did talk to uh, the right wing people who are really allied with the, the main union. Um, and uh we did when we talk to them of course we do adapt a bit our our speech but i think we're not uh lying so when we talk to uh the, the right wing we will of course emphasis on uh the economic relevance of our systems and uh in order to strengthen our um our cause uh, we did uh, make a, a survey on uh, 20 farms, uh, 20 organic uh, CSA farms that were created uh, in, in uh, a, a life uh, of, uh, of 10 years. And we looked e economically, really, on uh, how, how do they work and uh, how did it go for the, for la for the first couple of years of uh, living of these farms. And we had really interesting figures on uh, the fact that uh, the, the, the salaries were, were quite good, uh, on the fact that 95% uh, of the farms were functioning after five years of existence, which if you compare to uh, other, uh, other economic sectors uh, in, in France, uh, if you compare to the, the, like the a company's firm's creation after five years, you usually do not tend to have these figures. So we did uh, try to get figures on our systems, uh, which basically showed that even economically, not only on values, on uh, relocalizing the economy, on the environment, but also really on economically, our, our, uh, in, our uh, new farms were stronger than the other farms, which are actually depending on public subsidies. This is not the case for our farms. They do not depend on public subsidies. They depend on people eating. Um, and uh, we were really with that survey proving that basically in investing in uh, helping uh, the setting up of these farms uh, would actually cost less money than putting than than putting uh, new subsidies for uh, big farms who were actually really dependent on on on, on uh, public subsidies. So uh, that's an adaptation of our traditional speech that we make when we talk to the, the when we talk to the left wingers. Uh, we, we talk a bit about that, but we also talk about the need to, you know, have uh, uh, more women uh, uh, at the heads of the farm, to have more uh, environmental farms, to have more organic, to have, and, and we know this is important for them. But here, uh, talking to the enemies, we did adapt the, the, the speech. But as I said, again, we did not go until the very big enemies who really do not share uh, our perspectives. Yeah. Even though sometimes the far the far right do share our perspectives and and this is frightening, but we in our in the French CSA movement we decide not to talk to them. Even though sometimes, and this is interesting, sometimes they take some of our uh, recommendations, they post things on the CSAs, on Twitter and so on, but we decide not to react to not give them uh, more weight. Yeah, it's an important point. The German CSA never gets the same position. It's important to stay open about some things we are close to. Simona, is it another comment or is your hand still raised? Okay, <laughs> thanks. So Nico, please go ahead with your hey, question. I hope you can hear me, guys. Yeah, now it's working. And, um, so uh, on that point, basically, what I've noticed too is that um, the um, CSAs seem to have a very positive economic uh, part to it, right? Um, and but the people running CSAs usually 
are not that focused on it uh, in terms of their philosophy, right? So is this a problem for um, your group to embrace the fact that uh, it seems to be that farms that are switching to uh, CSA style farming um, are actually economically valid or even like strong? Um, I think it's not a problem if you if you do not uh, if you if that does not mean if that if that does not mean that CSA uh, change in nature in order to become economically uh, robust. But w what we say is that basically CSA is in terms of values, environment, social, and women's uh, participation very strong. But we we, the, the, we can, can combine, combine this strength with an economic strength because we have more. Um, it's easier for a farm like ours to access to credit than to a big farm because a farm like ours has 150 families who agree to actually buy uh, their uh, vegetables for one year. This is n not possible in the agro-industrial world. You're dependent on um, a cooperative here, a big contract there, and you have no certainty to sell uh, what you produce, uh, at least not uh, as, uh, as, as, as strong as in the CSA movement. So it's how do you maintain the values of CSA, which are very strong, and uh, add to that the, the, the economic argument. Yeah, is there, is there a, low, uh, a risk, right, for, for this uh, to be uh, potentially exploited by people seeing the economic strength of uh, the CSA movement? I I don't know. I don't know if it's a risk, uh, but it's a reality that uh, in 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 their economic uh, way of seeing the world, if you're analyzing CSA. Uh, on uh, on a research base, you know, like uh, without uh, talking about values, but really about facts, the CSAs are relevant. They work, and uh, they uh, they should be replicated. So I don't think we should be hiding about this fact. Uh, I, I think we should show it and talk about it because uh, the farms that are uh, with a group of 150 eaters uh, partnering with them. Usually that farm works, and it works better than a farm which has no client and which has to find client every week. Um, so uh, even you know even the the finance sector understands that. So I I I don't think it will lead to um, I don't think it 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 should lead to uh, changing the CSA. Uh, I think the CSA should be extremely strong on its on values, and it, it means we're producing uh, organic. People are actually uh, talking with us every week to actually question us on what do we do in the field. Uh, we're trying to promote diversity in our field, but also in the uh, people we, we, we talk with. Uh, we're uh, uh, also um, in... in, in uh, in, um, with a very, very strong commitment strong. to relocalizing agriculture in order to make sure that our uh, economic system is not attacking uh, people in developing country. And therefore, this is why we promote CSAs, because since we relocalize agriculture, we do not need to uh, have big farms who export and therefore have negative impacts in the south of uh, the world. So we, I think we can be strong on that. But we shouldn't be shy about uh, claiming that our system works economically, and uh, and and I yeah, think yeah. No, I if agree. we do I just, want to, I just... no, I agree. I just it, see yeah. uh, some hesitance about it in, in in my experience. People don't want to embrace the fact that it is economically um, strong. But thank you a lot. Um, I, I think especially. If you, if we should, we should also um, link it to the fact that we uh, we tend to have many young people who want to become uh, farmers. And I don't know in your country, but in our country, since uh, COVID, 
it has uh, it has really uh, almost doubled the, the 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 number of people w- wanting to change their life and become a farmer. And for these people, for these you know new um, uh, candidates uh, for farm creations, uh, we should also uh, show a system which uh, which works economically. So I think especially with with these new candidates who weren't the 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 more uh, politically engaged candidates, they just you know lived something during COVID and wanting to change their life, and we need to show them that we 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 have. Um, we have solutions for them to change their life, which do not mean uh, that they will uh, uh, become, uh, you know, the poorest of the poorest and they won't be able to feed their, their children. And no, we have uh, ways, uh, thanks to uh, the eaters that are partnering with us, to make sure that their farm will be uh, uh, economically sustainable. Okay, thanks. Uh, Just one point, a technical point, because we have like half an hour left and we just wanted to make like a small discussion as well. And as I see now, it's already starting this discussion in the exchange. Um, So we think we will like split the group in two, like make two breakout sessions, one with Leonie, the other one with Florent, and then you can just discuss these topics a little bit more. Just shortly, like something uh, about 10 minutes because time is running quick. <laughs> it's always like this, what you planned and what you can do with different things. Um, so yeah, we will send you to some breakout sessions, 10 minutes, keep on discussing, like, and think about like, how can you connect the, the things you learn, the input from Florent, the input from Leonie, like on your own missions, like on your own ways and campaigns of advocacy. So I think Alena is right now preparing the breakout sessions. And then afterwards we can make like a short experience sharing. And then we give you like an, an, an introduction to the e-learning as well, so that you know how it will go on, what to expect next. And as well, we lose some words about um, the question and answer session next week and the second live session, which will be in two weeks as well in this room. Alina, how are the the breakout sessions going? I hope we are ready for this. So I open the breakout rooms for now. And see you in a minute. I, w- I won't join. I I'm just need a little break. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll be back. We are waiting here. <laughs> Hi guys, sorry I had to I had to jump out because I had another um, meeting. I hope it's going well. <laughs> it's going- <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> with all the issues we had, it's going well. <laughs> the presenter showed up in the end. It's great. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> I'm just yeah, finally. We had some I had some Moodle issues uh, this morning. Uh, it was being buggy and not saving any information. So, but it looks like it's finally working. So it should be available by the time um, the session ends. <laughs> all on the last minute, right? <laughs> at least um so sam then this link will be sent straight after the session today or will it be sent tomorrow so we don't yeah I'll send it. yeah yeah sorry i'll send it uh, i'll send it today well what, what will happen actually is i'll enroll everyone and then everyone will receive a link from moodle that uh will ask them to change their password and then they'll have access to the course but it would be a good idea i'll once i do that i'll send i can send you an email it will be good to just alert everyone um, that that email is coming because sometimes it goes into the spam folder. So, yeah, we had issues with this as well because some people ask like, "Oh, where's the link?" Yeah. yeah. But this we can mention. I think that you or Ned will introduce a little bit to this e-learning, like what, like to the Moodle, and then you can say that they as well should check their their spam if there's something. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
So a little bit stressful with Floran. <laughs> <laughs> Always need to be like this. <laughs> you forgot it or what? I was just... <laughs> okay. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I wasn't really like how to fill the half an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What a girl. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, as you see, I'm really just sitting here next to the university. Oh. <laughs> Just go here, like, where's the place in the shade with the internet? Like, <laughs> it's total improvisation in the space, so it's but it's yeah. great. I, it so. works, right? yeah. I think it will take something. Some people left already, so yeah, but uh, I think a lot of questions uh, to Leonie and also to Cloran. It's so hmm. from your from the Lavi network, <laughs> most <laughs> days, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some people are listening. <laughs> so. so then after this session, we just... Um, just like highlights from each groups and... Uh, oh. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the summer Natalie a little bit talk, some short resume with the Moodle and the online platform and closing. Mm -hmm. So, and I think we should say something about the questions answer session next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the mention both session, the what is different between the question and answer and the second live session. Shall I do it or shall you, will you make it? You can do it, uh, all of these. And I resume, I prepare a resume to the mail. We cannot be so, just only the short sentence. Okay, so you will write another email to... Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I really like the mail you sent it. It was really very nicely layouted and everything. <laughs> it's more professional than I do. <laughs> yeah, but a little bit messy with the time zones. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah, this project. I'm really happy now that it's the point things are going, it's working out, and it's like, oof. <laughs> big part is done. <laughs> Um, will you copy the chat or can you copy the chat later because um, I think it's fine because uh, in the chat is included in the cloud uh, it's one part of recording is uh, chat some chatting okay. place so because yeah, I just wanted to know some of the answers or some of the questions maybe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it's, it's nice material for the later yeah, that's it. So you're happy? I think everything goes quite well, actually. So, well, except the little. <laughs> normal. <laughs> you cannot plan, right? <laughs> when they cut off the electricity. <laughs> yeah, cut off the electricity. It was a very straight improvisation, like, okay, bam, take my things, go, <laughs> where's internet? <laughs> Sam is also back, so maybe you can say something. Yeah, he just said, like, yeah. The, yeah. Of the movie stuff, and we'll just be right back. Good, good.
And Natalie, do you need our like a script for this session uh, in, a, in a document or something? Mm, no, so we don't need it for for reporting or anything. Um, it's just useful to have for the for the session. But I think we'll we'll need it beyond that. I mean, you can always put it on the cloud, you know, on the drive, just mm. in case. But um, yeah. Yeah, we can also download the some list of participants who will be joined for this session. It's also possible in the Zoom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I did that for the other as well. The report of the who joined. That's that's quite useful, I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's what needs to be for the reporting and everything. So. Yeah, we need the registrations and numbers of of people who who mm -hmm. were live session so but zoom can can tell us how many people were there and so <laughs> yeah zoom is a little bit like a big brother <laughs> for this <laughs> <laughs> but there were quite a few people actually so at some point i think there were like uh 28 29 or something that i saw I, I, I almost was 30, something. yeah almost 30 for yeah. the first hour and so super yeah that's great. A lot of Germans, I think. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the lovely network is really and rich <laughs> <laughs> for the question and participants. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a little bit our plan for the second live session. Uh, create some special breakout room for the Germans for German networking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, then then I'll leave you leave you that part, Sam. <laughs> we can be both introduced. <laughs> we managed to get floor up eventually. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yeah, people come back in a minute. Yeah. And we will now really just like a small highlighting and experience sharing, and then we pass on to you to give the introduction to the e-learning, or or I will give a small introduction about the content. I don't know what, how to. <laughs> Yeah, for us, I, I think just to mention how they will access it um, is fine. And maybe so that they into the spot. About the content, and then you can say something about this technical. technical yeah. Nature. Yeah, sure. Super. <laughs> the center right concept. Welcome back, Florent. <laughs> you kicked out the room. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. That's always like this. The breakout session starts and then they are finished very quickly. Yeah. Of course, we could have had spent the frustrating <laughs> way more, but time is always this, right? <laughs> and we think like two hours in total is, is enough. It's a lot for everybody. So, yeah, we like in the last 15 minutes. So we want to just hear some highlights, not like whole discussion and whole big stories, but just some highlights. Then we will introduce like the e-learning platform and what will follow to you. And so then we will close. Anyone has some highlights, some important aspects where you say like, this is the essence of our discussion or this is important for the exchange. Anyone? Just feel free. You can keep it as a secret as well. It's fine for us. <laughs> You're not forced to clear, uh, Simona. For me, it was the highlight to um, listen to, oh my God, I forgot his name, our French colleague. Florent. Florent, sorry. <laughs> for, for his motivation and um, to be re reminded of the, um, of the power we actually have if we just use it, uh, it reminds me of uh, times when I was more active, uh, the 
GMO movement we had in Germany too some years ago. Yeah, we we should revive this, or I I should revive this and see how much energy I have for this struggle. Thank you very much, Laurent. Yeah, any other comments? I really appreciate this as well, Florent. You have like you spread a lot of energy and share it really catches the fire. Any other comments, highlights of anyone? One or two more. Otherwise, that's fine as well. I think we all heard a lot, learned a lot. So no more? Okay, that's fine as well. In the second live session, there will be more room for discussion and exchange and everything as well, like after we pass through the, the materials and everything. So this will be a bit more interactive. Because, but now in this session, we needed more like introduction and everything. Um, yeah. So now in the last 10 minutes, we will introduce to like what's going on. I have been talking about this e-learning about the platform. Um, so this course now, these two hours were really just like the warm up to get the room together to introduce to some inputs from different perspectives, as you've seen, if you've heard uh, of an activist, of a researcher, there are very different topics to keep in mind. And you see, we could have made like a very, very wide range about advocacy. It's so much to talk about and so much to, to educate and we can just offer very small aspects. So the next part, Sam and Ned will say something about the, the technical issues. It will be like, you are invited to an e-learning platform. It's on Moodle. You can click yourself through. We presented, uh, we prepared some, some presentation, some information, some polls, different activities, some exercises as well that you can reflect uh, on your organization and on your organization, uh, organization's capacities as well. Um, we divided it in kind of three parts. I already mentioned it in the beginning. Um, one is about public focusing on public relations. The other one more on coalition building and the last one on lobbying, like direct interaction with politicians. Um, each of the section is roughly about half an hour, depends on how quick your reading is, how deeply you dive into the exercises. So it can you can expand it, but yeah, you're free to do it and on the time it sweets best, it sweets best to you. So it's some input, some exercises to just know better what's advocacy about and to get a clearer image of your organization's capacities. I think, I don't know, Sam or Ned, some of you may can say something about how it will go on, how they can get into the e-learning platform and everything. Sam, please. Yes, thank you, uh, Baldur. Um, so as, he, as we mentioned here, that this is kind of a two-part module where we'll have live sessions. So this live session, as well as the Q&A session and the final live session next week. And the other component will be this sort of self-paced learning. Maybe you're familiar with this. Maybe you've taken courses like this in the past. Maybe you're even familiar with Moodle, which is a fairly um, widespread and well-known uh, learning platform. We have finished uh, uploading the course onto Moodle. We just need to enroll everyone into the course. So what you'll need to look out for is an automatic email that's going to ask you to change your password on the platform. We just ask you to, and it'll be sent today. So if you just make sure to check your email, but also check the spam folder because from time to time, it will uh, end up in that bucket as opposed to your inbox. And once you change your password, you'll have access to the course or access to Moodle as well as uh, the course itself. You'll be enrolled in that specific course, but I wanna, I'll just show you kind of what things will look like here. Let's, okay. Oh, do I need to be added as a co-host, Baldur, maybe? Elena, can you add in? Oh, great, thank you. Okay. We all see this? Okay. So this is our e-learning platform and we have a, a lot of different courses on it, but you will be enrolled in this course here, the Building Blocks of Advocacy, working at the national level. It's fairly straightforward and, and simple to use. So if you enter the course, you'll have a brief course description and the module itself will be this link right here, the self-paced module. And it actually is an embedded course built in a separate platform 
um, by our colleagues Baldur and Elena and Annika. And just to give you a little taste of it, if we enter the course, this is what it's going to start looking like as we move through. So I'll let you walk through at your own pace, but uh, it's quite simple uh, entering the Moodle platform and accessing the course itself. And we will also have a couple of links to the next live sessions as well. So as I said, we'll send this out uh, this afternoon after this session. Or excuse me, I'm in the <laughs> I'm in the U.S., so I'm on a different time zone here. <laughs> um, and you'll have access, uh, and you'll be asked to change your password, as I said. But if you have any technical problems, feel free to reach out to Baldur or myself or Natalie, and we'll make sure to get you get you enrolled. And I think, unless there's anything I'm missing, Natalie. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think I just. We oh. lost Natalie. Miss Natalie. Right in the recording moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Today we all have technical issues. It's <laughs> something <laughs> new. So, yeah, then I will just go on. <laughs> I think hopefully Natalie comes back. Um, yeah, as Sam already know, uh, mentioned, uh, most of the stuff is now on the platform, it's in the Moodle. So you're really up to go through it on your own time if you start right now today, if you start tomorrow, if you want to do it on the weekend, if you do it once at all, if you just make it in small steps, it's really up to you. Um, we have planned a question and answer session on next Tuesday. So it's just from six to seven o'clock, just one hour. If you have any questions concerning the course, the content, the uh, technical issues or whatever, it's not about, we will not give another input. It's not obligatory. So if you have anything, you can come, you can join. It will be in this same Zoom room. So if there's anything, you can come. If not, it's fine. Just that you know that we are there if there's anything. And always in between, if there are any issues, just don't hesitate to write an email to me or to Sam or to Alena. I think it will be fine. And yeah, we've planned a second live session as well to like close the course. So now we have like two weeks to go through the material. And um, yeah, in the second live session, it will be a bit similar. We do not need to make so much introduction. So uh, there's more room for discussion and for exchange of your experiences. Um, so after you click through the, the information, after you got more content, uh, hopefully you got like uh, a bit more knowledge, you gain more knowledge. Um, so, but we have two um, speakers, two experts as well. This, I think Alina can say something about them better. She knows them better than me. Oh, yeah, we will invite uh, uh, Martin, who is involved in uh, Friends, uh, friends of the Earth in the Czech Republic. He has a little bit uh, experiences with advocacy and campaigning. And also we invite uh, um, uh, Teresa, who is the local leader uh, and a really strong uh, active in the CSA movement in the Czech Republic and local activities and etc. So uh, a little bit different perspective about uh, basic advocacy from the Central and Eastern Europe. Yeah, exactly. So now you know what to expect, that there's something to follow, some more input, other activists. And I mean, Friend of the Earth is a very big NGO, so I think as well we can learn a lot from their perspective. So yeah. yeah. If Just one final point, Baldur, sorry to jump in. Or... Sam, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I just want I put it in the chat, but I just wanted to say that the the, the course will not close at the end of the second live session. The, the course will be available on the platform for a number of months. And then we'll actually put the entire modular program together with uh, the three other complementary courses. And that will be hosted on the Urgency Learning Hub. So these materials and these courses will be available uh, in the future and not just for the next couple of weeks. Very important point to mention, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Sam, for adding this. And so, as well, if you have friends, colleagues, people who are interested in this topic in CSA, in agroecology, you can invite them to visit the Urgency Hub to use it to 
there as well um, trainings on very different topics. So just have a look at it. It's really worth it to to see what's how you can educate yourself and we all like yeah become better advocates and really push forward agroecology and the issue of CSA that we bring back farmers and consumers that we have close food chains. I think it's an important issue we all work on. So I think the session comes to an end. Just one or two questions I want to give with you. So just think about like, what is your aim? If you have any specific point you want to work on, like what's your specific purpose you want to advocate? Just reflect on this because it's pretty useful when you go into the to, into the e-learning that you have some rough idea on which direction you want to go because I think yeah. it makes some of the exercises a bit bit more easy. <laughs> so I think yeah, up to two hours we come and end. I hope everybody of you got some input. You learned a little bit. Some of you look very tired. Can depend on the time. Can depend on so much input and new things you heard. I think you can like now digest it and um, yeah, go on tomorrow, go on the next days. And yeah, thanks a lot. It was great. Thanks for your participation, everyone. Thank you very much. Have Thank fun. you. Bye. Thank bye you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye.